Hi, so that we know now the basic of Photon and the Photon Engine, we can now go to the more advanced stuff. In this video I will talk about how your players will have a smooth network experience. This is how laggy it is normally or right now. And this is after we applied our tips and tricks so that we have the lag compensated and everything will look smooth. So if we test our game on our local machine, we have to add the Photon Lag Simulation GUI. As soon as we start the game, we will see the network simulation window. We can check simulate and as soon as we check it, uh, the simulation is going on. So we can have a lag. So this is the latency and the jitter is uh, just the messing up of the messages. So this will uh, modify the sequence. The messages are arriving and the loss is a package loss. So how many package on average uh, will be lost? Now you can see in my game window that everything is okay from a lag perspective. But now let's uh, toggle the simulate button, turn up the jitter and the loss on both windows. And maybe a lag of 200 milliseconds on both windows. And then we will definitely know the difference. So the animation does not look smooth anymore. I walk around and it takes forever uh, for the client to respond and display it correctly. If you go to the website of Photon, there's already a suggestion. So here you can see how you can compute the lag and then you just take the velocity multiplied by the lag and add this to the position. So let's add this to our project and see what it does. And as you can see, it does not really seem to work. So the player is uh, still transported from A to B and it does not look like a smooth movement. So if you have watched the last tutorial, the first thing we have to do is to get rid of all the network coding in player except the on hit RPC. So this means uh, the synchronization and this ground check here. We create a complete new class called network player. What we will do is we store the synced values, but, but we do not apply them directly. We interpolate and smooth them. So we're moving some parts from the player to the network player. This is the iPod observable and the code that actually destroys the controller. So there we go. The first thing that we should do is to get a reference to the player. We add a protected player and on a rake we get the component. This means that we have to change our prefab. Here's a prefab of our player and now we can add the component. And there we go, network player. Now we should synchronize this network player instead of the player script. So just drag and drop it to the photon view. And that's all we got to do in Unity itself. First up, we will synchronize the position. So we will store it in a separate value, a vector 3 remote player position. On serialized view, we will do the following. We do stream send next the transform position. So this is a local player writing the actual position to the network. And when we receive it, we do not apply it directly. We just store it in a separate variable remote player position. The first thing on update we will check is if this entity is mine. And if this entity is mine, we do not want to apply any changes. Next up, we calculate the lag distance. The lag distance is a distance between the remote player position, this is what we just retrieved over the network, and the transfer position. If this distance is very high, for example, greater than five units, then we just apply these values directly because we cannot get in sync anymore. We're too far off from the actual player and we set the lag distance to zero. So the next thing is we check the magnitude of the lag distance. If this is really low, we will do nothing. So we set 1x to 0 and 1z to 0. Otherwise, we will take the normalized vector of the lag distance and pass it to the one vector of the player input. So now we do not apply these values directly. We will just apply it to this input vectors and just uh, modify the input so that this script always tries to reach the player position, the remote player position. It's somewhat like an AI that is really stupid and always tries to follow this point. And here we can see it in action. You can see the red dot is the dot or the position that we receive over the network. The player will not directly jump to the position and the player will try to follow it. So the player looks smooth, but actually the position is uh, transported very laggy. But that's okay. It's only the visual style that have to be smooth. The network itself 
doesn't have to be that smooth. Even if I have a lag of 500 and a jitter of 100 and a loss of 10. Now we have to handle jumps. So therefore we say the lag distance uh, y is zero because we do not want to have a look at it in the following code. And after that we just say, okay, if the remote player position is higher than the uh, actual uh, position and higher with the distance of 0 0.2, then the player should jump. The direction the player is looking at should also be synchronized. So we introduce two new variables and synchronize them over the network on Photon Serialize View. We will send the actual values and store them in our remote values as always. So on update, we set the input one x, z and jump. And we have to set the look x and look z. So therefore we will smoothen the values. We will take the current value, look x, and we say the target, this is the target. We will pass a vel velocity, I will come to this, and a factor. This factor is a smooth time. This means in 0.2 seconds, the value look x will reach the remote look x. And therefore the smooth stamp has to store the velocity. We will just declare the velocity up here it just uh, has to be the same type as our target value. And there we go. And that's it. So the position is transferred and looks very smooth. We can jump and we can turn around and we can turn around very fast and it always looks smooth on the client side. So there are three tricks you can use to have some kind of lag compensation. There are many, many tricks out there and these are just my tricks. Um, if you want to see more, just leave a like. And if you want to follow this tutorial, just subscribe. More videos will follow soon.